Hi, this is Rich Merritt with Digital Combustion, and today's tutorial will be on adding your own custom backgrounds to Fire Studio. And in this case, we're going to be working with Fire Studio 7.0. So when you open Fire Studio and you get to this screen, uh, we can click on the Library button here to the left, and that's going to show us all of our libraries that we have loaded into Fire Studio. And the first library on the list is our background library. These are all the default pictures that come with Fire Studio. So what we want to do though is add our own pictures. And so what we'll need to do first is we need to create a library to put those pictures in. And some people would say, well, why don't we just put them in this background folder since I already have one? Well, being that this is a default folder, these are all locked. These libraries are locked. So if you see these buttons here, load background, load layer, and load sound, those are all grayed out because we don't want these libraries changed. These are the default libraries and so these are always the same. So what we need to do is create a new library. So I'm going to go ahead and click the create button here and it brings up um, this where you can search for where you want to save your library. We always recommend using subfolders that you can create underneath your Fire Studio folder that gets created under documents. So you're going to have a folder called documents and then Fire Studio, well, it'll be Fire Studio 6 or Fire Studio 7. And then there's a data folder in there. And then I always create all of my simulation folders and library folders and everything underneath there so that that way they're not on my desktop. I'm not tempted to delete them or move them or no one else is going to mess with them. So I like to keep them all in the same place. And that's where we recommend keeping all of your Fire Studio data is underneath that data folder and then create as many different folders and subfolders that you want underneath that data folder. So right now I have a folder that I've created where I have my custom libraries and so I'm going to go ahead and name this library um, New Buildings. And I'm going to click Select and then you can see at the bottom here I've got a, a new library and it's called New Buildings but there's nothing in it yet. Now I need to add some pictures to that library and so I'm going to click on the load background button and it's very important some people get confused and they might just click the load layer and then they'll put a background in there but it'll allow you to do that but just layers and backgrounds are two different things so they're handled differently by Fire Studio so we want you know, if you're going to use it as a background we want to make sure that we click the load background button so now I'm going to go and I need to find where my pictures are saved and so right here I've got uh, a folder that I've made called V7 Backgrounds. So I click on that and you can see I have some background photos here. So if, we, if I just wanted to take one of these, I would just select it and then click Select. And now you can see that that picture that I just added is down here in my New Buildings library. And if I wanted to add that to my simulation, I just click the Add button here and it adds it to the screen. Now if I want to go back either now or later and add a bunch more pictures, I can do that. And I can add them one at a time, but new to version 7, we can actually do a multi-select. So if I click on one, hit the shift key, and then click on the bottom one, I can select all these at once and have them all added to my library. So now you can see I have a, a new custom library. It says new buildings. I've got all my different backgrounds in there. And so now I have a new library that I can use and I can use these now on any simulation that I want because it's it's now in my library list if I if I decided I didn't want this library anymore I could remove it and removing it doesn't delete the library but it just removes it off the list so over time if you get a lot of libraries in there that you don't necessarily want to get rid of permanently but you want to you don't want to have to scroll through them you can just remove it by using this remove button so that's about it on adding your own custom backgrounds. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is, is just watch the resolution. I always try and match something that's close to maybe my what I'm running my computer at. Some of the new cameras and, and even cell phones take gigantic pictures that are five, six, seven thousand pixels by you know four or five thousand pixels. And those are really wasting a lot of resources within Fire Studio. So I would recommend keeping them down in the range of maybe two thousand pixels wide by maybe 1500 or so tall, you know, somewhere in that range, just so that you're not wasting a lot of resources. And sometimes it'll, it'll overwhelm your system and you won't even be able to dis display them in Fire Studio. So keep that in mind when you're uh, putting your pictures in and taking them out in the field. 
And that's about it for adding your own custom background. So I'm Rich Merritt with Digital Combustion, and we will see you on the next tutorial.